हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू अवर चैनल डेंटिस्ट्री टू द पॉइंट दिस इज डॉक्टर द्रुमिल मानिक एंड टुडे विल स्टार्ट विथ आर थर्ड टॉपिक फ्रॉम द वायरल इन्फेक्शन ऑफ ओरल कैविटी दैट इज हर्प इज जोस्टर राइट नाउ दिस हर्प इज जोस्टर हैज टू डिफरेंट नेम्स थ्रू विच यू कैन गेट अ शॉर्ट नोट दैट इज शिंगल्स और जोना मोस्ट कॉमनली द एग्जामिनर वुड प्रिफर टू आस्क एज हर्प इज जोस्टर बट समाइम्स टू कन्फ्यूज यू गाइज ही मे आस्क शिंगल्स और zona or you can also get a one mark question that what is the other name of herpes zoster or what is the causative virus which is responsible for shingles so you don't have to get confused shingles and zona is are the other names of herpes zoster so starting with the introduction of herpes zoster it is an acute infectious viral disease of extremely painful and incapacitating nature what it is it is an acute that means it is going to act or it is going to develop very fast and it is an viral infectious disease which is going to be extremely painful now there are two things which are going to happen in herpes zoster firstly there will be inflammation of dorsal root ganglia kya hoga there will be inflammation of dorsal root ganglia or you can also call it as extra medullary cranial nerve ganglia any cranial nerve Uh, it's course outside the medulla and it can get inflamed due to this virus which will lead to herpes zoster and these things are associated with vesicular eruptions on skin and mucous membrane in which these nerves are going to supply right whichever now whichever sensory now or whichever dorsal root ganglia is affected in that area of skin and mucous membrane you will see vesicular eruptions सो so, क्या हुआ दो चीजें हुई फर्स्ट देर इज इन्फ्लामेशन ऑफ डॉसल रूट गैंगलिया अलॉन्ग विद दैट देर इज वेसिकुलर इप्शन ऑफ स्किन एंड म्यूकस मेम्ब्रेन नाउ वॉट इज दॉजिटिव वायरस फॉर हर्प इज जोस्टर सो वेरी सेला जोस्टर इज अ वायरस विच इज रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर हर्प इज जोस्टर बट प्राइमरीली वेन वेरी सेला जोस्टर इज गोइंग टू अटैक इट इज गोइंग टू कॉज चिकन पॉक्स राइट द प्राइमरी इन्फेक्शन ऑफ वेरी सेला जोस्टर in children as we see there will be vesicular eruptions on all over the body right so the primary infection of varicella zoster will cause chicken pox and now after this primary infection is treated or it is cured the virus is going to stay in the latent state or it is going to stay in its inactive form in the dorsal root ganglia right and whenever the trigger is going to apply or whenever the virus is going to get triggered due to any stimulus then it is going to get reactivated which will lead to herpes zoster right so the primary infection of varicella zoster will cause chicken pox and reactivation of herpes zoster virus will lead to herpes zoster or shingles or zona right so these are the three names as i have already discussed earlier next the clinical features of this disease are going to be mainly first it is going to affect the adults because primary infection of varicella zoster is going to cause chicken pox in children and then when this virus is going to get reactivated it is going to mainly affect the adults right it is equally there is equal frequency in males and females there is no gender predilection seen among the herpes zoster virus rarely you can also see this disease in children these rare things are going to always come up in oral pathology you just need to concentrate on the main striking right it is mainly going to affect the adults with equal frequency in males and females next initially the adult patient exhibits so now whenever the virus is going to attack the body initially it is going to start as fever general malaise that is weakness pain and tenderness so whichever the dorsal root ganglia or sensory nerve is affected for example the trunk area is affected then in that area the patient is going to have pain and tenderness along that course of the nerve and it is usually seen unilaterally the most striking feature of herpes zoster is that it is going to affect unilateral side because any one sensory nerve or cranial nerve or dorsal root ganglia is going to get affected right both the sides are rarely affected but usually you will see that it is going to affect unilaterally so you can distinguish this from herpes simplex also herpes simplex is going to affect all over the area bilaterally also but this is having a striking feature that it will have unilateral clinical features oftenly as i said that trunk part is most commonly affected next within few days after the patient has developed fever general malaise pain and tenderness after few days he will see 
और यू विल फाइंड लीनियर पैप्यूल्स और वेसिकुलर इरप्शन ऑफ स्किन एंड म्यूकोजा इन दैट एरिया विच एवर द सेंसरी नर्व इज अफेक्टेड इन दैट एरिया सेड अर्लियर ऑल्सो यू विल सी पैप्यूल्स और वेसाइकल्स इन दैट स्किन और म्यूकस मेम्ब्रेन इट इज टिपिकली यूनिलेटरल एंड डरमेटोमिक इन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन दैट मीन्स की दिट इज गोइंग टू अफेक्ट ओनली वन साइड ऑफ द बॉडी एंड मेनली टारगेटिंग द स्किन डरमेटोमिक इन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इट इज गोइंग टू स्प्रेड अलॉन्ग द स्किन एरिया राइट so now after this vesicles are going to rupture obviously in herpes simplex also we saw that the vesicles form they again get rupture convert into ulcer and then again there is formation of vesicles right so after the rupture of vesicles healing commences although sometimes there are chances that the patient may develop secondary infections and the healing is progressively delayed right so what you have to remember from this is it is going to have equal frequency in males and females initially it will start with fever general malaise pain and tenderness in the area affected mostly it will be unilateral in uh, target area uh, the target area is going to be unilateral trunk is the most common area affected after which you will see papules or vesicular eruption on skin and mucous membrane which are mostly going to be unilateral and it is going to have a dermatomic distribution that means it is going to spread along the skin after the rupture of vesicles healing is going to again start but sometimes the patient that is if he is immunocompromised then there are chances that there are secondary infection may develop and it may intervene or slow down the process of healing right occasionally herpes zoster may resemble the lesions of herpes simplex i said in herpes simplex also we see fluid filled vesicles which are again going to rupture and form again a new vesicle right but in this you can get confused that herpes zoster will always almost look like herpes simplex but the two diseases can be separated since the zoster virus cannot be transmitted to animals right the herpes simplex virus is spread it through direct contact we have if you guys have not watched that video of herpes simplex i would advise you to watch because herpes simplex has it spread through direct contact also but this herpes zoster will not have direct contact spread next moving on to the oral manifestations so before moving on to the oral manifestation these are the people who are at target risk uh, the predisposing factor or triggering factors which are going to uh, which are going to influence the varicella zoster virus to again get reactivated in the body like trauma or malignancy or any tumor which is involving that dorsal root ganglia x ray radiation or immunosuppressive therapy so these are the four main target uh, things which are going to reactivate the varicella zoster virus it is a common infection mainly seen in immunocompromised patient as we all know as i said before also if the patient is immunocompromised or he is going under an immunosuppressive therapy then there are chances or any malignancies develop like hodgkins disease or any other malignant lymphomas in that dorsal root ganglia then it may reactivate the virus and lead to herpes zoster sometimes the conditions may be life threatening if viscera is also involved right so next moving on to the oral manifestation so if we consider the oral manifestations the trigeminal nerve which is the nerve of face right there are three divisions of trigeminal nerve so if the virus has to cause the oral and manifestation it is going to mainly involve the trigeminal nerve any of the branches of trigeminal nerve can be involved that is ophthalmic maxillary or mandibular divisions of trigeminal nerve and any sub branches of these main branches can be involved right along with that if face or uh, the face area that is if trigeminal nerve is involved you will see same vesicular eruptions on that area of the face which will again rupture and lead to healing right so herpes zoster may involve the face by infection of trigeminal nerve i already said this usually consists of unilateral involvement of skin see herpes zoster is going to always be unilateral right you just mug up in this mind that herpes zoster unilateral involvement due to dorsal nerve root ganglia which is attacked by the virus this is just a simple statement which you can remember and you can just summarize the whole topic so this usually consists of unilateral involvement of skin area supplied by either as i said ophthalmic maxillary or mandibular division of trigeminal nerve 
now next uh, you can see the oral manifestation in the oral cavity you can see small vesicular eruptions this will be mostly unilateral so these are the small vesicular eruptions which will again rupture and lead to healing the lesions of oral mucosa are common which are represented as extremely painful vesicles found in various areas of the oral cavity like you can see in buccal mucosa you can see on the tongue you can see on uvula palate pharynx and larynx area right so these are the areas which are going to get affected by herpes zoster these vesicles generally rupture to leave the areas of erosion right so whenever this area this vesicles are going to get rupture it will appear as an eroded area and one of the characteristic clinical feature of this disease is involving the face or oral cavity is usually unilateral see this point is going to come repeatedly that there will be unilateral involvement in herpes zoster see this is an example showing unilateral involvement outside of the face on one side of the upper part of the lip you can see small vesicular eruptions which are already ruptured and lead led to an eroded area but yes you can still make out that there is unilateral involvement in face as well as palatal area also right so this is the main characteristic sign of herpes zoster that is unilaterality of lesions next there are also chances of complications which may develop like ramsay hunt syndrome now what is this ramsay hunt syndrome uh, it is going to involve the dorsal root ganglia of mainly uh, geniculate ganglion right geniculate ganglion if it is involved uh, that nerve root ganglia is involved then it may lead to ramsay hunt syndrome now the clinical manifestations mainly include facial paralysis as well as pain of external auditory meatus and pinna of the ear what will happen there will be facial paralysis first and the foremost that is lower motor neuron paralysis of facial now so lower motor neuron is facial now paralysis along with that you will have pain in the external auditory meatus and pinna of the ear right pain in the external auditory meatus and pinna this is the pinna area you can just follow the red marker i have put right along with that you will see vesicular rash on the external ear also in addition to that vesicular eruptions in the oral cavity oropharynx will also be seen with hoarseness of voice that is the voice is going to become hoarse and there will be tinnitus and vertigo associated with this clinical features so whenever you can get a single mark question that is one mark question that what are the three main striking features of ramsay hunt syndrome then you can just say vesicular rash on the external ear along with pain you will have lower motor neuron paralysis of facial nerve and loss of taste sensation on anterior two third of tongue so this is mainly characterized as ramsay hunt syndrome next moving on to the diagnosis of herpes zoster so herpes zoster can frequently be recognized by characteristic distribution of the lesion see again this point has come that wherever the lesion is seen if the lesion is unilateral and you can see you can just make out that this is herpes zoster it will have a dorsal nerve root ganglia involvement although there is similarity between herpes zoster and herpes simplex but still you need to see the distribution of lesion ki kitne area mein lesion distribute hua hai the skin lesions and the oral lesions may be easily identified as viral disease by cytologic smears you will do you will scrape out the lesion you will see the uh, you will create a smear and watch it in the microscope and finding of characteristic multinucleated giant cells in the histology of herpes simplex virus we also saw that we have multinucleated giant cells along with that we have intranuclear inclusion bodies right so zank cells and intranuclear intranuclear inclusion bodies are also seen however this does not differentiate between herpes zoster and herpes simplex right you cannot easily differentiate but yeah this can only be done by fluorescent antibody staining techniques viral culture or serologic diagnosis right so three main things firstly you will see characteristic distribution of the lesion secondly you will look for histologic findings like multinucleated giant cells and intranuclear inclusions after this also if you are not able to find out then you have to go for fluorescent antibody staining techniques or viral culture or serologic diagnosis so this is about herpes zoster lastly moving on to the treatment so mainly if this is an viral infection will mainly focus on antiviral therapy 
so the most common antiviral drugs which are used for this herpes zoster is acyclovir or valacyclovir are the main drugs which will be given along with this you can also give corticosteroids and symptomatic therapy is or like magic gel magic gel is a ointment which can be used to treat the the vesicular eruption or the eroded area on the skin right so this is the treatment option you just need to write that antiviral drugs like acyclovir or viracyclovir can be used along with that you can give corticosteroids and gels for symptomatic relief so this was all about herpes zoster virus i hope it is very much easy i'll just go through it once you just need to remember few points in herpes zoster right so firstly acute infectious disease involving dorsal root ganglia by varicella zoster virus which is going to primarily affect children as chicken pox and reactivated and which will lead to herpes zoster shingles or zona clinical features mainly adults are affected equal frequency you will see rarely in children unilateral lesions trunk is mainly affected you will see vesicular or papul papular eruptions on the skin and mucosa right these vesicles are going to rupture and form an eroded area these are the four main triggering factors like trauma malignancy or tumor x ray radiation or immunosuppressive therapy malignant tumors like hodgkin disease or malignant lymphomas moving on to the oral manifestation then it may it, uh, trigeminal nerve may get involved and there are three branches that is ophthalmic maxillary and mandibular division and whichever area the virus is going to attack that area you will see vesicular eruptions on the skin as well as mucus membrane so this was all about herpes zoster virus right most common sites like buccal mucosa tongue you will have pharynx larynx next ramsey hunt syndrome this is an important question mcq can also come in competitive exams like what are the three main striking features of ramsey hunt syndrome i have already discussed this next diagnosis of herpes zoster so it is going to be almost similar to herpes simplex but there are some points which will help you differentiate the two pathologies that is herpes simplex and herpes zoster lastly moving on to the treatment antiviral drugs corticosteroids and symptomatic the relief can be given to the patients so this is all about herpes zoster i hope you guys have understood if you have any doubts regarding this topic please let us know in the comments section and we'll soon be completing all the videos of oral pathology just sit back and just wait we just want little bit of your cooperation because we are also engaged in some work we are trying to complete is complete this as fast as possible i hope you guys enjoyed the lecture thank you so much please don't forget to like share and subscribe our channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you will be the first one to get notified whenever we post the new video thank you have a good day